Welcome to Ketchikan, Alaska's first city and salmon capital of the world. Hello friends, today we are in beautiful Ketchikan, Alaska and we are talking food. We're gonna talk food prices, we're gonna talk what's available, and we'll even take a look at some of the restaurants and their prices. Can we get a round of applause for this view out of our Airbnb? We do not live in Ketchikan, we're just here visiting for a few days. Ketchikan is a coastal city in southeast Alaska. There are no roads to get here. It is actually on an island. You either have to take an airplane or a ferry to get here. Or you can get here by a cruise ship. So it's a relatively small city by other standards. About 8,000 people live here, but it's a regional hub for all the communities around here. There's about 15 small little villages between you know, 200, 300 people down to 50 that call this their big city. They come here for the hospital services, for shopping, to gas up, and uh, anything else they might need, pharmacy. So to you or me, this might seem like a very small city, but it is very important for all of the outlying communities around here. So let's say you're living in Ketchikan, you're visiting here, or you just have a few hours at port off of one of the cruise ships and you need some amenities. Let's go check out what they have to offer by way of grocery stores and shopping. The closest store to the city center is Safeway. So that's gonna be our first stop. Mark headed into a local scuba diving and dive shop and I am going to check out the Safeway grocery store. Safeways tend to be a little bit more expensive regardless of where you are. So let's see what their prices are. Okay, $8.99 for six avocados. That's better than I can get at Costco in Anchorage. $7.99 for a huge thing of tomatoes. Mangoes are four for five dollars. And nectarines are $3.49 a pound. A golden pineapple will run you $5.99. They have quite a nice organic section. Thing of blueberries, $7.99 and two pounds of strawberries, $8.99. Apples range from $1.99 for Red Delicious down to $3.49 for Honey Crisp. And just about everything in between. Naval oranges are $2.79 a pound. And bananas are 89 cents a pound. Nothing too shocking yet. White onions, $2.19. Potatoes, $1.49 a pound. We are a hunting and fishing family, so I never know what to look at when it comes to beef and fish, but here is $24.94 for three and a half pounds of beef. Ground turkey is $5.99 for one pound. Let's look at the eggs. These seem to have gone up almost everywhere. Five dozen eggs, $11.89. Four sticks of butter for $6.49. You can also get the value butter for $4.49. A bag of chips is about $6.69. A block of medium cheddar Tillamook cheese. This is two pounds, $10.99. A frozen pizza is gonna run you about $10. Let's have a look at the milk. All right, up first, a gallon of almond milk is $6.29. Organic whole milk is $9.99 for a gallon. Got a regular gallon down there for $4.29. Not too bad on the milk. I feel like with what I've been paying in Anchorage, that's a little bit less even. All right, loaves of bread look like they're going for about four to six dollars depending on what kind you like. They do have some cheaper little things of bread for $2.99. Ice cream is definitely low stock here. I don't know if you can see in there, but not a single thing at Tillamook. They do also have a Starbucks in here. Starbucks prices ranged from about $3 for a cup of just regular coffee to $6 for specialty drinks. But if I'm being honest, if you are 
in Alaska and you are a coffee drinker, find a local coffee roastery because I, I hear that's what you should try and experience when you're in Alaska because Alaskans love their coffee. Here's my breakdown of Safeway. One, their sign is very sad looking here out on the water. I was actually really surprised the prices were not bad in there, especially for a Safeway, because in my experience, Safeways tend to be really expensive. Then Mark reminded me why the prices are not as high here as I was expecting. Can you tell us why? Yeah, it's probably because it's a lot closer to where they make the items. I mean, we're closer to Seattle probably than we are to Anchorage. So it's a, really not that long of a barge trip up here compared to what it takes to get everything up to Anchorage. So in my mind, we were like out in the middle of nowhere, but really we are closer to the lower 48 than we are in Anchorage. So things just get here easier. So things do come in by barge and maybe every once in a while by airplane. But remember, there is no road to Ketchikan, so they have to come in by boat or plane. Let's take a quick look at the gas prices here at Safeway. Yeah, 529, 539, 549, and then 571 for diesel. So in Anchorage right now, our gas is sitting around 475. We've seen a little bit of a drop, so this is still a little bit higher than what we're seeing in Anchorage, but not outrageous. Well, it is outrageous, but not outrageous for like, it's outrageous because it's so high, but it's not any higher than Alaska in general. Don't have a Lowe's or a Home Depot, but they do have this Madison True Value store for building supplies and a lumber yard over here. It smells good over here. Fresh cedar. It is very deceiving walking around today we are in short sleeves, short. I just threw my shorts in last minute like, oh, just in case. It has been rainy and misty every day up until this point. And that is the normal weather of Ketchikan. This today is like a bonus. It's not usually sunny. They get up to 16 feet of rain in Ketchikan a year. So when you think of Ketchikan, don't be deceived. This is not the typical weather. Misty, misty, rainy, humid is what you would expect for a normal day in Ketchikan. Like, yeah, like 190, 200 If we lived in Ketchikan, I think like, the first thing I'd be buying was a boat. Not necessarily a big one, but some kind of skiff to get out, explore and fish. Man, yeah. you just have to have something like that if you live here. I think you might feel a little trapped if you didn't have something like that. Just so much water around. Ketchikan is very unique. It's built into the hillside here. There are only about three or four streets deep in Ketchikan, but it's about 10 miles long. But because it's built right into the mountainside, there's only three feet, three feet. There's only about three streets. And so it really feels like you are on the water at all times. We're about a mile and a half away from the cruise ship harbor. This is the local small boat harbor. So these would be for fishing guides and locals to keep their boats. And some people just live here. Like you can see behind me, um, like right down there, there is so much kelp and uh, mussels and other stuff just on these, some of these boats. Some are working boats and others pretty much are just like live aboard apartments. They move them here or there occasionally, but not that often. So we just found a crab pot here on the dock. I'm pretty sure someone is dropping this thing down. So you could put uh, scented, like some bait or a fish head down in here. Crabs come, that this is open. They could crawl right on in and then they can't get out. And uh, somebody just, because it's tied off right here, they just put it right down in the water, probably here in the harbor. One thing I've never seen at a harbor is grocery carts. People must go shopping and bring their groceries right down to their boat with their carts. Because <laughs> I've seen them all up and down the harbor here. Have you ever seen that before? No, never seen it. I mean, it makes sense. I just never seen it. Safeway is really close at the top of the harbor, so they must just go shop and then come bring their supplies to their boat. Help you out, Mom. <laughs> I need to pull that never cart. It up the oh, man. You need to pull her up, not down. We have left the tourist district completely now and we are at the A and P grocery store which stands for Alaskan and proud to be. So we are going to go check out the prices in here.
mostly I just want to see if we can find any local things that might be interesting. AMP Market, fresh meat, bakery, produce, deli. All right, this is a beautiful store. It's very clean, very nicely put together. They have a family pantry section, which has some Kirkland products. Ketchikan does not have a Costco or a Sam's Club or any bulk stores, so it looks like this little section of the store is dedicated to having some bulk items. $16.39 for some chicken stock. We have a bunch of number 10 cans, about $20 to $26 a piece. 20 bucks for this bad boy. <laughs> You'd be eating nachos for days. <laughs> yeah. Might tell me would not be happy. Or we love these black beans, twelve thirty nine for eight cans. Ooh, Mark's feeling the music. Ooh, they've got lots of bulk stuff that we don't bucks. even have. Fifty bucks for some cherries. Huh. You're a barista or something. Or? Yeah, twenty two sixty nine for some vegetable oil. Oh, it's a two pack, so two pack for twenty two sixty nine. Eight sixty nine for a Costco bag of tortilla chips. It's always interesting to look at the diapers. So a box of 192 diapers, $59.99. Smaller ones, let's see. A smaller thing of 28 diapers. Oh, they have an in-store special for $9.99. Originally $17.49, so definitely have to look out for sale prices. Bag of cat food is about $35. 40 pound bag of dog food for $57. Over outside and call the kids. Kirkland bath tissues, $33.99. So they seem to have this like generic brand here called Essential Every Day, and those prices don't seem too bad. Eight rolls of paper towels for $6.98, whereas this six rolls of Bounty is $24.29. I don't know, these look pretty generic though. You might get what you pay for. This says it's the international section. So they've got some different international foods. In different languages. Scallops. $21.59 or $23.99 a pound. This halibut is $15 for that one little piece. That makes me appreciate what's in my freezer even more. $15. Oh wow, their five dozen eggs are $21.99. Here is sweet pepper, $7.99. $2.49. $2.49 each for corn. They do have a really nice looking salad bar here. They do have quite the selection here of like fresh made little salads and pressed juices. That look really good. Sandwiches. They also have a Froyo Center, which got me because we have a long walk back in the hot sun. We got some passion orange guava, Froyo, non-dairy sorbet because it's hot outside and we got a couple miles to walk back. I'm gonna skip the toppings, but. Well, I was sad not to see a lot of local fish there. That was definitely more of a hometown feel and they had some bulk prices that were a good deal. Now I gotta find Mark. He came outside to call the kids. And this passion orange guava sorbet is fantastic. When I came out of the A&P grocery store this afternoon, I was telling Mark I was surprised there wasn't like Dungeness crab and local salmon, local halibut for purchase inside the store. The halibut they had there was from Seattle and then that led to a discussion on where you would probably get your fresh seafood if you lived in a community like this. Do you want to answer that? Oh yeah, the people that I know that live out in the remote communities, they purchase most of their seafood. Either they 
get it themselves by catching it or their family or they go get it at the fish processing plant you can go buy cases of fish and crab and stuff i think they give it out at like wholesale rates if you're local at least that's how i believe they do it out in the aleutian islands for the people i know so when we got back i looked it up and it did say that if you wanted some fresh crab you go right to the processing plant and buy it there so that answered my question you got to go right to the source which totally makes sense there was one more grocery store in ketchikan that needs to be recognized the Tatsuda grocery store opened in 1916 by Jimmy Tatsuda, a Japanese immigrant and his family. It was a staple to the community of Ketchikan for over 100 years. It had a brief internet claim to fame when a baby black bear cub got into the store and made a mess of the produce. According to the Ketchikan Daily News, the small black bear cub walked in the front door of Tatsuda's IGA. A customer eventually captured the bear and let it loose from the store's back door and onto the trail leading into the woods. Several thousand dollars of ruined produce was donated to a livestock owner. Unfortunately, in February 2020, a rock slide damaged a large portion of the building. Thankfully, it happened at night and no one was injured, but they did have to permanently close their doors in 2021 after 104 years of service. You all know I love a good backstory, and this one needed to be told to honor the Tatsuda family. Ketchikan also has a Walmart, but it's quite a few miles out of town. We don't have a rental car, but there is a free shuttle that comes around every 15 to 30 minutes. So I'm waiting for the shuttle and we're gonna go check out the Ketchikan Walmart. Between waiting for the shuttle and then riding around town and coming out here, it took about 35 minutes to get out to Walmart. So if you need supplies, this could be a great place to come. It looks like a medium-sized Walmart. Let's go inside and see what kind of things they have. All right, right off the bat, I have never seen this in my life. This brand, Splash Fizz drinks for $1.28. A big Alaska t-shirt and trinket section right up in the front. So it has a very different layout than any Walmart I've ever been into because it seems a bit smaller, but it still seems to have everything that a big Walmart would have other than fresh fruits and vegetables. I haven't seen those yet. So we have gardening, office supplies and back to school, crafting section, party, card section. Office supplies, more office supplies, makeup section. You do have quite a few empty shelves. And pharmacy. The bread and coffee section, chips, crackers soft drinks and juices, breakfast, pasta and soups. The aisles are not very long, but they are well stocked. Home decor, candles, more home decor and laundry, curtain rods and blinds, curtains, and bathroom. You do have the clothing section and accessories. Takes up this whole part of the store. Of course, lots of rain boots or wellies. This is a very wet town. It's got a lot of rain boots. It's a good thing to keep stocked year round here. After the shoe section is the toy section and bikes. Okay, we have the book section and then they do have quite a large electronic section. It's very big for the size of this store. 
I really haven't seen any other electronic stores in town, so this is probably it. We have housewares, so appliances, cooking supplies, irons, vacuums, towels and blankets and pillows and Tupperware, bedding, and rugs. Got luggage over here, sporting goods over here, firearms, fishing equipment, very important, outdoor gear, rain suits. If you didn't have a rain suit and it was raining every day, this would be really important to come. $65 for that. Fishing waders. These are the same price I paid in Anchorage last week. Car auto care. Then the do-it-yourself section. So ladders, paint, locks tapes spray paint lighting fixtures household doodads very big clearance section several aisles of pet gear food supplies big bag of 30 pounds 48, 14, kitty litter. More craft supplies. Oh, they have sewing supplies here. And household cleaners. Paper towels. You can get six rolls for $12. Plates. Last up is their food sections. All right, here's the rundown after I've toured the whole store. Very, very small section of food, very small section of frozen and cooler products, no fresh produce. The grocery stores in town will cover you for those things, but this store has just so many more supplies, household goods, electronics that the other stores don't carry at all. So this kind of becomes your one-stop shop for everything else. There are several local hardware stores and fishing supply stores, so there's not a ton of that here. There's one or two aisles, but very, very, very minimal food here. is a subway in here too so that makes two subways in town well I just got a drink which was 98 cents which is what I pay in Anchorage um, they do have a six and a half percent sales tax here so I paid a dollar four I'm not used to having sales tax in Anchorage so a little bit more expensive when you add on the tax everything else seemed pretty par with Anchorage prices but it was a little bit hard to film in there because the music was very loud and it was super, super busy and the aisles are very small. It's a very compact Walmart and it just seemed really busy. Unfortunately, I just saw both shuttles leaving the parking lot as I walked out here. So now I sit and wait. The Walmart is quite far out of town, about five or six miles. And it's more in like an industrial section, not a tourist section at all. Let's head back into the city of Ketchikan and we will discuss some of the food options for eating out in Ketchikan. First up, let's talk fast food. There were two subways, one in the Walmart and one in town. The prices ranged from $11 to $16 for a foot long sub. Then add on another $4 for chips and a drink. We love Subway, but the prices seemed really high. They also have McDonald's that is part of their Plaza Mall. I have to say it was probably one of the nicest looking McDonald's inside that I have ever been in. The burgers ranged from $4 for a basic burger up to $9 for a Denali Mac. 
Nuggets range from $2.79 and up to $9 for a 20 piece. That is without making it into a meal. Their black coffee was $1.50 up to $4.50 for an iced mocha. When I walked through the mall, they also had a taco time and the burritos ranged from about $8 for an a la carte burrito to $12 for a meal. That was it in the town of Ketchikan for fast food. Mark and I went to a local burger joint called Burger Queen on the first afternoon we were in town and for two burgers, a large fry, and a can of soda, we spent $35. We also went to a local Mexican-Italian restaurant for dinner one night called the Ocean View Restaurant, which had an overwhelmingly huge menu. It went on for 28 pages and covered everything from tacos to burgers to pasta, pizza, calzones, sandwiches, and fish. After much debate, I decided on a hero salad for $23.99 and Mark got a street taco meal for $27.99. With taxes and tip, we spent around $60, but the real winner of the night was watching the harbor seals and sea lion in the water as we ate. Our splurge meal of the trip was at the George Inlet Lodge for a Dungeness Crab Feast. At $85 a piece, it was our most expensive meal, but if you have looked at the cost of crab lately, we feel like it was worth it. Crab leg number three. You enjoying it, Mark? Yeah, yeah, this is fantastic. The $85 crab feast included a shuttle to and from the lodge, a glass of wine or beer, or in our case, all you could drink, soda or water, all you can eat crab for about 45 minutes and a small salad, and we would 100% recommend it. There were of course some other seafood options closer to town, offering fish and chips, fish tacos, and salmon chowder. They were more in the $15 to $25 price range for a small basket of fish. As you walk around town, there are lots of local cafes serving Alaska coffee and other Alaska specials like reindeer sausage, and a really good looking sushi bar. I opted to try out the Alaska Crepe Company, a locally owned restaurant specializing in sweet and savory crepes. It was really hard to decide on just one, but they are quite spendy at $14 to $18 a piece, so I decided on a sweet blueberry crepe and enjoyed watching it come together. The crepe is amazing. I wish Mark was here to help me eat it, but I'll just have to eat it myself. Their savory crepes looked fantastic. Pesto, salmon, all sorts of good things. Good choice. There are bars and restaurants everywhere you look in downtown Ketchikan, so you are bound to find something good to eat or drink. Now the price of groceries seemed to be on par with other Alaska prices, but eating out did seem to be quite a bit more expensive in Ketchikan. I'll blame that on the fact that it is a cruise ship destination. Thank you so much for checking out the food and shopping of Ketchikan. We are so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you, we love you, and we will see you again soon for more of this Alaska life.